everyone. I am Dr. Shreya Chaudhary, your microbiology faculty and today we will be discussing a very important topic from mycology, opportunistic mycosis. So what are opportunistic mycosis? Opportunistic mycosis are those fungal infections which are caused by non-pathogenic or less pathogenic or contaminant fungi whenever they find an opportunity when the host immune system goes down. So these are the opportunistic mycosis which we will be discussing one by one. Candidiasis, cryptococcosis, aspergillosis, zygomycosis, pneumocystosis, penicilliosis and fusariosis. Among these, penicilliosis is caused by penicillium marnifi which is a dimorphic fungi. So let us first see candidiasis. Candidiasis is the most common fungal infections in humans. It is caused by candida albicans which is a yeast like fungi and it is the most common species associated with candidiasis. Candida forms a part of normal flora of humans. So it is a normal flora in many parts like skin, GI tract, and female genital tract. So candida is a part of the normal flora. Apart from candida albicans, other species also cause human infections which are known as candida non-albicans. These are Candida tropicalis, Candida cruzi, Candida glabrata, Candida parasolopsis, Candida gulerimundi, Candida dublinensis, Candida lusante, Candida oris and Candida kefir. Among these Candida tropicalis is the most common non-albicans Candida species which causes human infections. Candida parasolopsis is known to spread through caregiver's hand means in hospital outbreaks particularly in neonates this plays a major role. Candida auris is a highly resistant candida species. And it causes nosocomial outbreaks and are very difficult to treat. What are the predisposing factors which can predispose a patient to develop candidiasis? These are extremes of age, means the neonates and elderly people are more prone to develop candidiasis. Patients who are immune suppressed, patients who are on broad spectrum antibiotics, febrile neutropenia and diabetes mellitus. Now let us see the pathogenesis and the virulence factors of candida which helps it to establish infection. First are the adhesins. These adhesins present in the candida species helps to adhere to the skin and the mucosa and establish the infection. The candida species releases number of hydrolytic enzymes which helps in host cell protein degradation and hence the tissue invasion and hence they can result in dissemination. Next are the toxins which are just like bacterial toxins produced by the candida species and they are pyrogenic. Pseudohyphae is a very important virulence factor of the candida. They play a role in the pathogenesis by two ways. First of all the hyphal tip has the enzyme phospholipase which helps in tissue invasion. And the second is that the hyphal form are larger as compared to the yeast cell. So they are more resistant to phagocytosis as compared to the yeast cell. In this way pseudohyphae production plays a major role in the pathogenesis. And whenever pseudohyphae are present it indicates active infection caused by the candida species. Next is phenotypic switching. Phenotypic switching means the candida species can switch into the different morphological forms like it can exist as yeast, as pseudohyphae as well as hyphae. This helps in adaptation in host by evading the host defense system and hence aids in dissemination. 
So now let us come to this AIMS question. A sexually active young woman presented with curdy white vaginal discharge, itching and dyspareunia. She responded to the treatment with oral fluconazole and the likely pathogen causing the infection is. So we will be discussing the answer once we discuss the clinical manifestations of candidiasis. So the clinical manifestation of candidiasis can be broadly divided into two. We will be discussing as infectious diseases and second allergic manifestations. So the infectious diseases are further subdivided into mucocutaneous infections, cutaneous infections and the cystific manifestation. We will describing them all of them one by one. So oral thrush is the most common form of infection caused by candida. It is also known as oropharyngeal candidiasis. Thick white mucus plaques are formed in the tongue. They can involve the gums, the pharynx and this is a commonly asked image based question in various exams in which the image of oral thrush is given and you have to either identify the pathologic agent or you have to tell the treatment. Apart from oral thrush, stomatitis and glossitis can occur. Elementary candidiasis involves the esophageal candidiasis which is commonly seen in AIDS patients. And second most commonly affected organ after esophagus is the stomach resulting in gastritis due to candida. Next is vulvovaginitis which is most commonly asked as a clinical question. The characteristic feature is curd like vaginal discharge, white color curd like vaginal discharge are seen in vaginal candidiasis and this is common in the reproductive age group and in young females and in males it causes balanitis and at times candida can result in decrease in sperm count. Chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis is a condition which occurs when the cell mediated immunity is deficient and it results in candidal plaques or lesions numerous site apart from the oral cavity. It can be in the skin and mucous membranes. Next is ocular candidiasis which is predisposed by tropical use of steroids and results in keratoconjunctivitis. The cutaneous manifestations are intertriginous which is the candidal infection of the skin folds. Infection of the nails result in paronychia and onychomycosis and diaper dermatitis is common in infants due to prolonged use of a diaper particularly when moisture is present or when it is contaminated with urine and feces for a long duration. Next are the systemic manifestation. The most common infection is urinary tract infection which occurs. The presence of candida in the urine as well as pus cell helps in establishing the diagnosis well. Apart from that endocarditis, pulmonary candidiasis, meningitis, candidemia, arthritis, osteomyelitis, endophthalmitis and nosocomial candida infection occurs. Now nosocomial infection is particularly the species which are responsible for causing nosocomial infection that is which are hospital acquired are usually candida glabrata. Candida paracelopsis, and Candida auris. Other species can also cause but these are commonly encountered in the nosocomial candidiasis cases. Allergic manifestations can be candids which are the lesions formed as a result of reaction to the metabolic products of the Candida species. They can be eczema, asthma as well as gastrite. Now coming back to our question which was asked in AIMS, a sexually active young woman. So the age group of the woman is sexually active and young and she has curdy white vaginal discharge which is the characteristic feature of vaginal candidiasis. 
In this question, another clue has been added, which is the response to oral fluconazole, with which you can guess that it could be a fungal infection. So, the answer here is Candida albicans. Now, other options also I will tell briefly. Uh, Trichomonas vaginalis results in frothy, greenish, foul smelling vaginal discharge. So, trichomonas vaginalis is caused by a parasite which causes infection, but the discharge would be frothy, green, foul smelling. Gardenella vaginensis is responsible for causing bacterial vaginosis. And the characteristics feature are whiff test. In whiff test, when the vaginal secretion is mixed with 10% KOH, then there is a fishy odor. And second, presence of clue cells, which are epithelial cells studded with various bacteria causing the infection. These topics we will be discussing under their respective subheading, but here to rule out the options, I have told you few points which can be mentioned and you can rule out easily. Aspergillus flavors does not cause any infection like this. Our answer is Candida albicans. Now, this is an AIMS question, this is an image based question, a HIV positive patient presented with following lesion in the oral cavity. So, you see this is a case of oral thrush. So, what is the treatment? Now, you have identified the causative agent being candida. So, the treatment will be antifungal agents. The antifungal agent used for treatment are the azoles. Now coming to this question, a patient presented with dysphagia and was diagnosed with esophageal candidiasis. So the, in the question esophageal candidiasis is mentioned. The organism isolated was cultured in human serum and below are the findings visible on microscopy of the culture. The phenomenon is known as. So we will be answering this once we discuss the laboratory diagnosis of candidiasis. This is an image based question asked in AIMS.